good evening and welcome to the Russian non-league football podcast. Uh, my name is Dima. I am uh, admin of uh, Russian non-league football Twitter account. Uh, it's uh, very nervous for me to talk uh, in the podcast. It's my first podcast ever. Uh, but I think that it's an interesting idea to launch it right now. Uh, sorry for some not good uh, English. Uh, I think that I will have some mistakes. And so I think that we can start with uh, Russian non-league. Uh, Belarusian football is an exception uh, on my page. Uh, I think that uh, it's very interesting to talk about Belarusian football right now uh, with uh, many fans uh, of Belarusian football right now and of course big thanks uh, to all uh, fan accounts about clubs uh, and such uh, big pages like uh, Belarusian fans uh, Thanks for them a lot, uh, for lineups, uh, for players' information especially. And I need to, to say uh, huge, huge thanks uh, to our sponsors, uh, to uh, Total Football Analysis. It's a magazine uh, site about uh, football right on the pitch, about tactics. Uh, uh, you can get it free or subscribe uh, for not a big sum. Uh, big thanks uh, to uh, Snapshot, non leak Snapshot's uh, Twitter account. Uh, they helped us. Uh, and uh, also Fun Team and their fantasy contest uh, on funteam.com. Uh, you should know you must be. 18 plus here, be gamble away and of course uh, be careful. As we start with uh, Russian non-league, I think uh, that we can start uh, firstly with uh, Russian winter football uh, in Moscow and Moscow region. I'm based in Moscow and Moscow region. Uh, some cups uh, championship uh, usually playing in in winter uh, it's very interesting because uh, many snow here may, sometimes it's very cold uh, but it's a pre-season non-league pre-season uh, because uh, it's uh, not like in the Russian Premier League and uh, Russian non-league play from uh, it's it play in summer uh, so the winter is a pre-season in Moscow, we had uh, a winter Moscow Football Federation President Cup. The final game uh, played on March uh, 6th. Uh, War number no. 5 with sports school in Yegorysk uh, had won over Rosic uh, 3 1. It's an interesting game. Uh, they played, uh, I think, they played at uh, uh, Sokol Stadium uh, near famous free uh, Moscow's uh, Vauxhalls. And some German groundhoppers uh, attended this game near three or four. It's interesting, uh, German invasion was. Also in this uh, tournament played uh, other teams, uh, for example, youth teams of Rodina, Himki, it's professional clubs, uh, Lokomotiv Moscow uh, had uh, under 18 team, CSK Moscow and Torpedo Moscow also had under 18 teams here, and also Strogino, PFL club, from the third tier also had under 21 team here. And non-league teams of Zelenograd and Smena Moscow. 
also cup uh, Gulaev's cup uh, played uh, in Moscow and Moscow region mostly in Moscow region and the final game played on the 1st of March um, Pirasve Damadedo won it oh, uh, war number 5 again 2-2 uh, two, two, and on penalties 5-4 uh, the game for the third place played between Kolomna Reserves and Stupina. Kolomna Reserves from professional football and Stupina from non league. It was nil nil and uh, 5 4 on penalties. Stupina won it. Also, Mitishinska Zima or the Winter in Mitishi Cup uh, played uh, in February and uh, it's uh, without playoffs, uh, just a league table. Four teams uh, competed until uh, 20, uh, 20th uh, of February and uh, in the last week, we have seen Legion Ivantevka won it with 13 points. And also uh, such teams as Meteor Balashiha, Olympic, Mitishi and Mitalis Karelov played here. Uh, I've seen, uh, I attended uh, the game, the final game of Ivantevka. Legion Ivantevka and Mitalis Korolev. Uh, Legion won it for two and uh, they won this cup uh, with a crowd of 50. It's not uh, bad for winter football. Uh, but of course it uh, was interesting that uh, we had no snow uh, at this date and we have a real unique winter here in Moscow with almost without snow and so the winter football was uh, much comfortable. Also Cup of Nations uh, uh, was played in Moscow uh, with several teams played and uh, Peresvet, uh, Damadedova uh, have won it again with 15 points. Also, uh, we have seen such uh, teams like Krasnysgavkst, Smolensk. Uh, it's a non league team, but they are looking for the PFL, the third tier professional. Uh, and uh, also in the Cup of Nations, uh, we have seen uh, Znamenaginsk, they are also looking for the PFL. Uh, Dolga Prudny, Domadedova, Yos team, and uh, two very interesting teams of Barricada and Inter. Uh, such very new teams uh, which played uh, uh, only in uh, Winter Cup so far. Uh, and the results are very, ter very terrible results. Uh, Barricada consisted of uh, usually of uh, Africans players uh, and uh, results was uh, too terrible for example they uh, had lost to Zgavkst uh, 19 nil and uh, Inter also had some not so good results uh, such as 13 3 and uh, in the last week the two teams played with each other and they had a draw to two. Uh, it's almost uh, all winter tournaments. Also I have seen uh, the regular uh, winter championship of the Moskovsky town. Uh, it's not uh, uh, exactly a town, uh, it's a part of New Moscow to the south of the old part of Moscow. Uh, Moskovsky, it's, uh, I think it's more correct to say it's a uh, uh, borough of uh, New Moscow. And in this uh, championship, there are two groups. Uh, in the higher league, in the high group, 
uh, it's uh, Spartak club of with the name of Spartak have won it with 10 points and uh, in the in the group below the first group was Kersenets uh, have won it with 10 points um, a lot of uh, very funny names of teams uh, here in such winter cup some teams uh, prepare for their season new season maybe the first ever in the club's uh, history uh, for example in Gulyayev's cup Gulyayev is it's uh, uh, some late uh, footballer it's uh, some legend for uh, Moscow region in Gulyayev's cup uh, for example we have seen uh, such club as such club as uh, PSV but it's not a PSV with a f some fans uh, from Netherlands uh, it's a PCP SV Ramenske it's a short uh, name of uh, the some old uh, footballer uh, who has uh, his career finishing to the end soon and so he decides to launch his football club and uh, for example in the Moskovsky winter championship we have seen such club as FC hockey club Rosich Penguins so and they played uh, for a number of years <laughs> very interesting name also there is uh, such tournament uh, in Moscow as uh, winter kids yours championship uh, it's not very interesting to see how kids are playing of course uh, for ground hoppers but here in moscow we have not so many games to see to attend and uh, uh, these uh, kids yours championship uh, uh, covers uh, some interesting grounds old grounds soviet soviet grounds uh, and uh, for example in march i attended uh, and Smena Moscow game under 16 game and Smena won it uh, 2-1 away uh, it was a very interesting moment when I have seen uh, some people near uh, celebrated Russian Sharov tight or muslin it's uh, nearby the stadium it's very unique to see I think it's very Russian ground hoping and it was snow on the uh, first of the first of March and of course uh, with all that with coronavirus uh, we almost uh, haven't any football uh, right now at the moment uh, nobody knows until what the what date and uh, cases of the of virus uh, more and more every day and even all eight side uh, leagues amateur leagues uh, uh, also has have stopped and uh, I think that uh, and we will have almost no football until the first of May I think I, I think it's unfort unfortunately uh, we'll have not football uh, and yes, of course, I forget to uh, mention uh, final results of the Winter Kids Yours Championship uh, in the club's league, the three leagues. Uh, in the club's league, the highest step of it, uh, Spartak Moscow Academy uh, won it. And uh, in the first league, Spartak Academy, the second team, uh, won it and uh, in the second uh, league Himke uh, the second team of Himke uh, Academy won it too uh, Smena Moscow uh, the team I have uh, I had attended uh, had lost in playoffs to Vitesse Podolsk and so we can uh, talk uh, uh, a little about uh, Belarusian football uh, I'm not a pundit in 
Belarus, to be honest, and uh, I'm not a pundit in the football in the row, to be honest, and uh, I really knew only one Artur Mileski uh, until all that with uh, Belarusian football became very popular. Uh, and uh, really, I didn't know about such clubs as uh, Garade and Belshina, for example. Uh, it's nice to, see, nice to see that people uh, became interested in Belarusian football abroad, and it's very unique, uh, even for all post-Soviet football, of course. And we have so many clubs' uh, accounts abroad in English, and uh, I think we... I think we have, haven't have only Witebsk with such account. Uh, we have a very interesting click table right now and uh, I need to say that uh, Belarusian Premier League uh, is a strong league with strong top five, top four clubs uh, and uh, but uh, Borisov uh, with uh, their uh, their leaders for years, it's uh, Hegemon, yes, and uh, Dynamo Brest broke it last season, of course, but anyway, top four is uh, top four, and uh, such clubs as Energeti Begu uh, from Minsk, who are on the top now, uh, it's like a dream and no more, it's like English Premier League uh, at the start of the season, and with Watford, Bournemouth, Leicester on the top, uh, but uh, of course, uh, can uh, Belarusian Premier League has its uh, Leicester? Uh, maybe, maybe can. So at least uh, we see that, but uh, really have some problems, and it's what I can confirm uh, right now. Uh, they have uh, lost their uh, old boss Kapski, and uh, I see and people uh, have said that uh, there's some mess around the players, how they interact. It's something uh, really wrong. And also, I can confirm that uh, with some confidence uh, that uh, Slavia Moser. Uh, it's quite a very prospective team here, uh, and especially when I have seen uh, yesterday's uh, cup tie against uh, Bate, and they uh, have won over Bate again. Uh, they have some many prospective players, uh, Russian players. It's very interesting, especially for me. And so it will be very interesting uh, to see what what will be uh, in the next two week, especially against Ruh. Also, it's uh, definitely it's uh, I can say with confidence that uh, Belshina and Gorede will struggle surely. Uh, because they have some financial problems, of course, and it's not uh, mostly about football on the pitch. If we talk about the results of all the weeks in this season, new season, uh, the most interesting game I have seen, I think it's uh, Slutsk uh, and Islach. It's uh, very unique uh, to see how influence from their international fan club uh, Slutsk wor worldwide uh, Facebook page, how uh, how they influence on the uh, on the players, and players uh, have said that uh, they really think about international support before the games, not in the game during the game, uh, but uh, something uh, very unique for Belarus and uh, of course it's a very little, it's very tiny league and of course uh, such connection is available. Uh, and maybe because of this international branch, uh, 
Slutsk uh, really have shown it uh, their character and it's uh, very influencing. Uh, with the week four is coming, uh, I uh, some most uh, the most of the games are very unpredictable, uh, and uh, with some confidence, uh, I can say only about Neman, Grodna, and uh, Dinamo Minsk because they play with Gorede and Belshina, so Gorede and Belshina will struggle, I think. Uh, so. It's only two pr very predictable games and other games uh, too strong. Maybe Dinamo Brest uh, uh, have uh, some adventures, some advantage uh, against Islach. Islach is a very young team and of course uh, it's uh, uh, something uh, strange that they are situated so high. Uh, but uh, Dynamo Brest, they had a uh, very good cup tie, and they were real. They were really strong. And so I think it's all for today. Uh, it's my first ever podcast, and uh, I was very nervous. And you may uh, see, it, you may notice it. Uh, so I can uh, do in other podcast very soon and uh, so uh, check our feed for this and also you can uh, donate for us uh, our paypal details are open and also all the details about uh, our donations about our sponsors uh, all that information below in the description of our podcast so thank you a lot uh, it was a big big uh, pleasure for me see you later